we thought we were going to be attacked by pigs. He took my body and threw it in front of him and started running. And the theory was, well, if they're chewing on him, they won't chew on me. <laughs> Hey, this is Ed over at Team Aquascape. I am out at a legend's house. This is Robert Arrington of Deer Meat for Dinner. This is a really cool project, really cool property. First of all, check that rig out right there. Deer Meat for Dinner, all over YouTube. Unbelievable stuff. Robert's a great guy, and there he is. This is gonna be a location for a new home, which is going right here where they've been doing some of this earthwork. Robert, what's going on, buddy? You! <laughs> I'm redoing a lot of my barn. Like, we're, we're putting in a processing room and a walk-in cooler because I do a lot of work with wild game. I'm constantly processing wild game, doing my catch, clean, and cooks. So right over here is gonna be my finished out processing room with a window looking out over this big area. So I was thinking putting in like an L-shaped pond right in this area. I just think it would be a cool spot that when we're over here, it has that wonderful sound of cascading water. When you're looking out through the window, maybe we've got some kind of waterfall that you see and it just brings people over here and is a great place <laughs> to hang out, you know? I love it. Look, you guys are the experts. I have an idea of what I want, but man, I'm just throwing this ball to you and letting you do what you want with it. Excellent, well, we are looking forward to it. You can see uh, Gabe, Rob's brother, pretty experienced operator. Having a, a good piece of equipment, and even more important than a good piece of equipment, is an experienced operator behind the piece of equipment makes all the difference in it getting the job done right. We're gonna get this whole area dug out 12 inches, and then come and figure out where our deep spot's gonna be. This thing's moving along. Hole is roughed in. I might still do one more deep spot down in here, but right now we're exactly at two feet. This whole area is at like 16 inches in through here, more like 12 up in this spot. I really like the shape of it, especially when uh, the waterfall gets pulled in from over in that spot there. But it's looking nice. It's a lot of rock. That's a lot of rock. <laughs> Yo, that's a lot of rock. Holy cow. This pond is specifically built for two reasons. Most important, to get their kids outside and let them interact with this feature. They're, they're really into the outdoors. They want their children to be in the outdoors and you can tell that they are because we came here this morning and look at how the kids are already playing with it. They got their machines out here. And you know what I love they, about this? They're two young girls. All kids love to play in the dirt. A generation ago, an average five-year-old kid had eaten a 50-pound bucket of dirt. That's why they didn't have diseases as much or, or allergies and all these symptoms, asthma, because they're in the dirt and that's what Rob wants. He's got a farm here. He wants his kids outside getting their hands dirty and not doing antibacterial so, and it's a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be, but we'll still get it. We got a lot of guys here. This is fun. These are the guys that are going to see this project all the way through. Say hey, guys. Hey. Yeah, on father. Hey, new machines out here. Some more guys over here. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of come in. We want to clean up all of these edges, get all this stuff done, we're, and then we can get our fabric and liner in. So all I got to say is, it's amazing to be a part of. This is our dream home, and to see it all come to life. All the guys that you brought down here, all those certified contractors that have come down have been super friendly. Watching my brother just go to town working with you guys, it's a special feeling, man. He's been running awesome. that Bobcat since ninth grade in high school. Oh, I yeah. can't wait to hear stories in the future how your kids are using this and what they're oh. learning from it. I mean, in the future, like, I, my, what my goal was was like this week. There's gonna be so many relaxing, wonderful memories made right around this pond. It's not cool. even funny. Tell me what your brother's doing. My life is like a fluid situation, so I just tell you guys, I want this stump in there. Brian's ripping stuff back, painting <laughs> it out, Gabe grabs the backhoe, and we're changing things, which probably won't be the last change. It's a 
living piece of art, right, that we're building here. And so to try to build it off of a set design, first isn't any fun. Like this is way more fun to just kind of go with the flow and it'll pay off in the end. It'll look so much better. That stump was over there where my house is going to go. And seeing as you can't build a house on top of a stump, <laughs> my brother used that backhoe, pulled the stump out of the ground, and I was like, oh my gosh, whenever I get a water feature, I want it in the water feature. So one of the first things I said when I got here is we were going over the design and off in the corner of my eye, I see this stump and I'm gonna show you, but I go, Rob, can we use that for the pond? He was like, you better use it for the pond. This guy is gonna get carved and put into the pond. It's just gonna be awesome. So this is my favorite part of every job. We just set our first rock. We've laid out the pond, we've come up with the design, we've done the excavation, we've got the fabric and the liner, and you can see Josh is hooking up with the skimmer in the back. We've got a pondless ball over there for some additional pump storage, and then we got our first rock. This is the fun part. This is the creative part that I enjoy doing so much. How we place these rocks is gonna totally determine what this pond looks like and what the shape is gonna end up looking like when it's filled up with water. You can see how it rocks a little bit. We can't have it rock, so we've got some little rocks over here, and we want to make sure this thing doesn't move at all because the kids are going to interact with it. This is one of these rocks we all call destination boulders. The kind of rocks that invite people to walk right up onto them. So we want to make sure that they're super solid. While they're doing that, I'm going to go grab another rock and we'll just keep doing it one piece at a time. So awesome how everybody comes together. So that's Rob's dad. He's got a chainsaw. He's cutting the bottom of that stump so we can sit it a little easier into the bottom of this pond. All those gnarly things cause a problem with getting it level. It's gonna stick up really high. All those little things sticking up the bottom could be a potential hole. So the flatter we can get it, the easier it'll be to set it. Speaking of holes, you can see Alan down here putting some rock pad down. We're using some pretty large boulders throughout this thing and the bottom of these rocks are really, really jagged. So the little bit of extra cost really is a great insurance policy and we're using the thick rock pad stuff there. This is the largest rock we have on site. You can see two straps picking it up. I made the decision to put it on the bottom of the pond, which a lot of people would disagree with, but these ponds are crystal clear, so I don't want to put all this gorgeous rock into the top, then look down at the bottom of the pond and just see a bunch of this little, little stuff. So have a big, big rock down the bottom of the pond. Might shrink the pond down a little bit and take up some of the depth area, but it'll look awesome. a toothbrush to a job to clean out the threads. There's only <laughs> one guy. <laughs> We're gonna stick around for maybe another hour, hour and a half, and uh, continue to rock this pond in. But I'm really happy with the way the shape is turning out. And then you gotta check out, remember that log I was telling you about? Check out this big giant log we put in here. Just awesome. Just love how twisted it is. I mean, look at how cool that is. So fish are just gonna love swimming around in areas like this. Water level comes someplace up into about there, right in that area there. I love this rock here how it starts off way above water level and then just kind of slopes down in. We got some cool rocks here that the kids can hop from one to the other. But we got some of these rocks and some of these rocks actually have holes in them. So look at this cool hole right here in this rock. So we're actually gonna bring water up through this hole. It'll get plumbed and then kind of trickle through here. We wanna run it really, really slow, giving this the pond kind of this spring-fed look off on the edge right there. I've got kind of a good vision on what it'll look like, but you never know until the end. And that's really why I still enjoy doing this. As much as I've done these and as many years as I've been doing it, still my favorite part is plugging it in and seeing if your vision actually came to life the way you thought it was. Are you climbing mountains again? Are you climbing mountains again? <laughs> this has been our mascot for most of the day. He's got a green nose. Whoa. 
You're not afraid of anything. <laughs> What's up guys? It's the end of day one in a lot better shape than we thought we were gonna be. Looking at what we got done, the picture obviously doesn't do it justice, but we didn't even have the liner in until one o'clock. Which is crazy. Right? There's a lot of rocks in here and we had to go get the rocks. Yes. This is even crazier. So One of the biggest challenges when you're dealing with big rocks like some of these guys over in here and you've got this you know, equipment over here, it's really one rock at a time. So you could put a hundred people out here right. and it doesn't make you go any faster because you got to wait for that stuff to get done before all of this little filler stuff. So based off of what we got done today, how are you feeling about tomorrow? Uh, a lot more optimistic than I was this morning. <laughs> all right, it's day two and a half. <laughs> That's a half. Back out here at Rob's, we got uh, a lot done. So I'm confident today we'll 100% finish and uh, we'll see if we can execute and get this thing uh, all tidied up tonight for the big reveal and um, for dinner. We've got our new power head in here. One of the key things with the power head is making sure that water can get into the back of all these. So we can't cover it with too much gravel. This is about perfect. There's some big voids back in there. Water gets pulled in through the back and then shot out through here. And the main reason we're doing that over here is just to kind of circulate water out of this dead area. So water will push out of here, push from behind me, and all get pulled that way. Awesome. You know how you can tell it's not rotted? That machine hasn't crushed it at all. Right. And ironically, when you put it in water, it lasts longer than exposed to the air. Everybody's misconception is how long is it going to last? But really, the low oxygen level, I am going to sound so much like Ed Ballou here. <laughs> what happens is the, the <laughs> oxygen content. <laughs> There's Brian running to be able to figure out where we can set this alongside. We want to keep those ferns that are kind of in the uh, pine straw and everything else. This is the art. This is what makes our jobs fun. We didn't plan on having this log. We just found this log, but now we're going to use this log and the other ones just like it. That to me is what makes doing my job fun. It's the last 10% that makes all the difference. When we set that log in here, you could see the end. So we dug back out, flipped it behind that rock so you don't see the joint, and then we leveled out that log. And now all we're doing is backfilling behind it so it looks like it's always been there. The pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. This is what makes our job so fun. I love my job. So one of the big things that affects the price of the pot is when you use big rocks because they've been working on this rock now for 45 minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six guys, 45 minutes. But it's art. What do you think? Oh, <laughs> I am. You're filming. You should know there's always a camera on somewhere. I, know, I was looking at it when it erupted. Water is going to spew up out of that and over. That's going to be a natural oh, waterfall. Oh, that's cool. The kids will love that. If you come over here, this is for the kids. We literally designed this so that they can go right across the stream right here. And there's gonna be like a rapids, you know, of water coming through, yeah. twisting through and going That's into that. Perfect. And then the waterfalls coming right down here. That's epic. That's epic. We're having fun. Anytime you can do a job where she makes no changes and uses the word epic more than two times <laughs> you have won. They'll be able to put a toy boat in there. Ah, uh, 100%. Down. This is what kids should be doing versus being inside. One thing that you've done, Greg, is you have definitely given kids and, and parents all across the world an idea and an ambition to do something. You may have to start off small, but yep. when you start off small, it plants that seed and puts that egg inside of you. And next thing you know, it's bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, we started off just turning her above ground little swimming pool into mm -hmm. a pond. Mm -hmm. So Rob was saying that, well, maybe we don't need to do the recreation pond. Just live with this for a year and then I'll let you answer that question because here's what happens. You always want more. You always want bigger. Wow. That's gonna be a ledge rock outside the pond, I'm thinking. Yeah, buddy! I'd say Ostrander's overcompensating. <laughs> as complicated as waterfalls look, literally one frame rock on one side, one frame rock on the other, water going in between. Bigger the waterfalls, bigger the frame rocks. 45 minutes digging the stone in and getting it all right. People that are going to appreciate it are going to be the three of us talking about it. But they will all appreciate the end product, which will look like it was built by Mother Nature and not man. They better. <laughs> We're putting Africa into place right now. If you drop it, you will shatter Africa. Pass the 
approval. That looks so good. Pond builder's mortar, right? It's a whole lot easier and forgiving than mixing up concrete and slapping it in there. Very happy to see you sitting yeah. down, sir. <laughs> I'm happy you had a chair for me to sit in. This guy right here is a huge reason why that pond looks like that. Hey, cheers, buddy. Thanks so much for the hospitality. You're awesome. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Woo. Look at that. All right, Sarah, what do you think? Do we? Epic! <laughs> epic, epic, epic. <laughs> You guys, so here, this is all I had to say. Is this a piece of property that I grew up next to? My dad built the house over there just to the east of us. Getting to actually live with my wife and my kids on this property was beyond a, a dream to me. It is the most huge honor to me as a friend of all of you and the husband of my wife, Sarah. Today is the start of our new home where we raise our kids and where we have many, many good times. I just wanna tell all of y'all personally, individually, collectively, thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart for all of the work that you put into our home, our pond, our land, and our lives. Thank you. And I wanna give a very huge, huge thank you to Greg Woodstock. <laughs> Building water features, making people understand how this brings your property to life. All of y'all are a part of that. So, everybody, we gotta give this absolute 100% effort in true Greg Woodstock fashion. <laughs>